All right, welcome everybody to a special edition holiday Williams and Bloom podcast here on Cyclone Fanatic. We are, of course, presented by our friends at MacDyne and Brent. I've been doing these podcast interviews for a long time now. There's two, there's two guys who make me nervous. Dan McCarney. I, I still get nervous when I talk to Coach McCarney because I see him when I was that 19 year old reporter and he's pointing at me. The legend. Yeah. And and this guy, because he's such a he's such a freaking legend, and we've tried to get him on the show for so long and never been able to find him. And and we've got him now. He's Coach Larry Eustachy, the icon. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show. I'm terrific, guys. It's an honor to be on your show. I really mean that. And it was such an honor to be at Iowa State. Special wow. place. We, uh, Brent, so here, our background coach, I grew up, don't hate me, I grew up a hawk, but I always say that. Really? Go ahead. Yeah, you, you have to see the dark side before you can find the light in life, right? <laughs> Brent grew up, probably you're, I mean, Brent, you were just worshiping Coach Eustacia your entire childhood, I would assume. Uh, that's fair. That's a fair assumption. Yeah. Yeah, him and Coach Floyd both, and it goes hand in hand, which will, which I'd love to get more details about how Coach Floyd convinced Coach Eustacia to come to Ames in the first place. I mean, that's the tie-ins are fascinating to me. So, but yes, I'm a longtime Cyclone lifer, and as I told Coach before the show, the '99 2000 team remains my favorite Iowa State team of all time, my favorite sports team of all time. That team right there. You know, like I said, it was special there uh I, at the time i didn't realize just what an unbelievable university it was you know as a coach you're in a coma and it's just the next game the next practice the next recruit and i didn't realize how special i had it and just it's my all-time school i mean i'm a i'm a cyclone i've always said that wherever i've been and, they, and it used to bother the Southern Miss and the Colorado States, but no question about it. Cyclone, true and low. Coach, your, your son was on the sidelines the other day. I, I saw him. I was there covering the game. I didn't get to talk to him, but I thought that was kind of cool, coaching for Idaho State, and he was back at Hilton. Was that neat to see? Yeah, they had a tight one, didn't they? It was uh, – <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, You know, I have four boys. I'm, I'm proud of all of them. Evan's terrific. He lives – three hours from me now. So we get to see a lot of each other. And, and, you know, growing up in my locker room in Tim Floyd's, you know, his first job was with Tim Floyd at El Paso. So, uh, he's, he's thick skinned <laughs> to say. Yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So coach, before we get into kind of the, the go back in the way back machine, where are you now? And what do you, what are you up to uh, with Boise state? I'm a senior consultant, which means I basically meet with Leon Rice, the head coach, before the game and don't talk about the game to get his mind off it. So I, I've really, you know, I've got an important role at Boise State. That's what I do. Love it. But it, it's cool. It's really cool. And you're going to be in Orlando this week as well. So I, this is great because I've been trying to track down Coachy Stacy Bloom for like three years, and now I'm going to get to do this podcast with him and hopefully get to shake your hand at the could, ESPN and Invitational. Could as well, play Iowa State. Could yeah, play you Iowa guys State in the might meet the Cyclones in the second round. You know, I didn't get that bracket right because I, I, my wife told me that last night. We have a home in Florida, about an hour from Orlando, and she naturally bolted on me early. <laughs> like we were talking before we went on, I, I got our times all mixed up so i almost fell asleep and missed this thing i'm I, I, i'm not i i i'm not on a good i can't i don't do good without land so yeah she said i go no iowa state's on the other end of the bracket so we are on our yeah. State side yeah so if both teams win their opener or both teams lose the opener they would play in the second round yeah which that'd would be, be cool. really cool hey I'd coach have, i i don't, i've tried i think i know the sands here have you played iowa state in any capacity since you left Ames? I played Johnny Orr in, uh, after, 
I had I, I had resigned or fired or and came out of rehab. Um, Fred asked me to do an alumni game. Oh yes, yep, I remember that. And uh, and I'll never forget. I might cry. I'll never forget when I came in that arena. The, I got a standing ovation. I mean that that's how Iowa State fans are knowledgeable, and, mm -hmm. and they 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 know what they're looking at, and it. So they so it was me against Johnny, and I'm not quite sure, but uh, I think I beat Johnny. <laughs> your your teams probably play a little more defense, Coach. <laughs> well, I had Fred on my team, and he had that heart valve. So he wanted to play, and I'm going, Fred. I you know this isn't going real well for me right now, and if you drop during this game, I I, you know, I, I don't. Know. You're, you're the golden boy. I don't think I'd ever recover. So that, that's kind of how all this started. And I got to defend myself because you come into the stream and you go, which one of you doesn't like me? And <laughs> and so this whole thing started. We, we had this great debate. So Brent and I, Coach, you'd love to sit at the country club with us and have uh, had these conversations with us because we'll just go and, okay, Brent, name every starter during the Greg McDermott era, and then we'll try and put them down on a piece of paper. And we were having the conversation this summer, and I think this is how you got a hold of us. It was the conver who's the greatest coach in Iowa State history? Is it Larry Stacey or is it Fred Hoiberg? And I made the point. I said Larry had the greatest top. It was the best team in Iowa State history. Fred was there longer and went to more NCAA tournaments. I'm never slandering you, sir. I uh, ne I would never slander the great Larry Stacey. Don't call me, sir. I, I, mean, <laughs> I can't help it. I can't I, help I, it. Fourth quarter of life. <laughs> and uh, that's what I like about Boise State. They call me Larry. It's kind of cool. Back to that. But, well, you guys need to get a life if that's all you need. Uh, We do. Truth. <laughs> You should talk to our wives. They say the same thing. It's it's embarrassing. So, so speaking of Iowa State coaches, I want to know how did Tim Floyd convince you to go to Iowa State in the first place? Because you guys had a relationship, what dating back to uh, Idaho, uh, where you got one of your first jobs when Tim was the head coach there. Right. You know, I I first met Tim when he was an assistant at at UTEP, and I was assistant at Mississippi State. Okay. So we'd hang out recruiting together. And then when he got his first job at Idaho, I went with him. And uh, it just kind of, you know, we were, we're best of friends to this day. So, you know, the rumor almost was that he's going on the Bulls. He's going on the Bulls. He's going on the Bulls. Well, we talked a lot during that time. And he said, uh, okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do what he goes. I'm. I'm going to Chicago and uh, I'm going to try to push you for this job. And, you know, at the time, him and Gene Smith, you know, they were, they got along, but you talk about me, Tim Floyd is very, very difficult to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I worked for him. No, he's great. Yeah. He's great. So, you know, all of a sudden I'm, I have the flu. I'm sick as a dog. I'm in Logan, Utah. And, uh, Richard Stark, Gary Thompson, and yep. Smith fly in. And I can, I mean, I had to really fake it, but they <laughs> interviewed me and oh, I was I was in all the way from the beginning. And I think they went and saw Stallings. Is it Stallings? Yep. yep. Yeah. Illinois State at the time, I think. Yeah. Yep. And it was really big a gene, you know, to to pull the trigger. And uh you know, it's and, and along with that, I had to buy, buy Floyd's house, so that was that was a deal. And the minute I got it, the water heater went out, it cost me six thousand dollars. So, uh, faulty, faulty, but that's Floyd at his best. So, then walk me through. So, you get you get to campus, Pfizer's already there, uh, Martin Rancic's already there, um, but the roster needed some some influx of talent. And I believe, if memory serves me correctly, what Travis Spivey was on campus was thought to be the point guard, but he got into some legal situations. So walk us through how you built that roster and specifically the legendary Jamal Tinsley and how you convinced a Brooklyn guy that was in school in JUCO to come to Ames. Well, backing up, there were some great players there. I mean, Paul Shirley yeah. was a great player. Martin Renzik 
was a great player. Stevie Johnson was a great player. So Tim had set the table. And then Jamal, uh, through some of our connections, was hidden out in the middle of the desert in California. And, uh, you know, a Rucker legend, but, you know, Jamal, Jamal uh, uh, did not have an offer. Hmm. Did not have an offer. Uh, it started picking up, but we were in there deep enough. So we picked up Jamal and, you know, we went from 15 and 15 to 30 something games. And that, that, you know, great team that we had picked last, by the way, picked last in the big 12. What were you thinking? Cause you guys first game of that, some expectations pick last, but then you lose to Drake. <laughs> right. <laughs> When, when did you that. Yeah. when did you realize that that team had something special? Because a lot of fans probably didn't realize it after you lost to Drake and scored what forty points. Yeah, and you know, I I told Jamal, I know you're a Rucker legend, and I know this and I know that, but this will be the toughest game you've ever been in in your life. Hmm. It's the most organized. It's the most talented. It will be. And he looked at me like I had three heads. We went in there and had 10 or 12 turnovers. So I'll never forget, we met back at Hilton, and that meeting lasted a while. And when I knew we were going to be good is when we played Cincinnati, who had Kenyon Martin was really at, at number one at the time. We yep. played really close over in Hilo, Hawaii. So I knew we'd be good. Uh, but, you know, I'd, we were coming off 15 and 15. Iowa State was by far, I mean, when you got to make the jump from mid major to high major, I'm talking high, high major, you know, Iowa State, you two better than anybody. I mean, that is a major, major situation, which I wasn't ready for, to be all on. All on. I was too immature. I was too this, too that. I wasn't ready for that type of, I hadn't been there. Uh, and really, the only place I felt comfortable was on the court. So, so, you know, they bought into how we played. And, and I, I mean, you look at what those, what Jamal's two years were, were incredible. So we went from 15 and 15 to, we had Jamal Tinsley, which was the key and Cantrell Horton. Don't yes. forget Cantrell Absolutely. Horton. Absolutely. Absolutely. Special. Cantrell, um, we'd sign him at Utah State. And I don't know if you remember, but so he got out of Utah State and he came with us and sat out or was still in junior college and came at the semester. We could have played him at the semester. And, Interesting. Okay. and, and Mike Nurse was one of the best guards yes. I ever coached. She was terrific. Uh, I don't think he gets enough credit for that team by far. He was a great guard. So I had to decide, was like, because you could play Cantrell in the second semester. Probably would have been in the NIT. We were 15 and 15. Mm -hmm. We just sucked it up and said, no, let, let, let's wait and hold Cantrell out. And kind of the rest is history. Coach, I I mean, unless I, you have a uh, – I'd like to just jump to the Palace of Auburn Hills. I, we had a guest on our network. Uh, I, I don't know how much you watch college football, Coach, but his name's Chris Felica. He's a really famous – college football commentator and he he told our guys this week he became an iowa state fan watching that game in the palace of auburn hills because he said the best team in the country was the iowa state cyclones they get that infamous draw where you have to go play michigan state in michigan and really one of the iconic I, Brent, it's the iconic game in Iowa State sports history, right? Like, there's no, there's nothing that tops that game, in my well, opinion. It, it, I, and still to this day, it's the the best chance Iowa State has had to win a national championship in either football or basketball. And let's so let's start there, Coach. Did you did you object at all when you saw that Iowa State was a two seed and Michigan State's the one seed, and Iowa State got to go to Minneapolis though, which I believe was kind of a you know, the, the 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 good part of the time in that regional because you could have all the Iowa State fans up there at the Metrodome. Correct. But, you know, I, I mean, I'll ask you guys this. If we had Kansas on our jersey yeah. instead of Iowa State, would we have been a two-seat or a one-seat? Oh, our... No one, doubt. Yeah. You, one seat. I mean, it should have been a one-seat all along. Absolutely. Yeah. I've never watched that game. I've never watched wow. that. Wow. Uh, 
that Michigan State game. Uh, you know, I didn't look at it as anything as, a, and our players didn't look at it as we got cheated. We, you know, I think it's safe to say that as Michigan State went on in the Final Four and cakewalked, that game was probably for the national championship. And, in, and even in spite of, you know, you, you, that's what we drew. That's what we had to do. That was our big thing. You know, we'll take on any, anybody, anywhere, anytime. And and we had, you know, we had a great chance. I, I'll never forget that infamous block charge yep. on Paul mm-hmm. Sherman, which, which, but I'll tell you what changed that game. And, and I, I do think about this. So, you know, we would zone from time to time. We we're known for a physical man to man team, but I knew that Tom Izzo was going to, out of a timeout, run a back screen, uh, Mateen Cleaves back screen for Mo Pete. And I said, okay, we're going to X this, which is our zone. And we were up about eight at the yeah. time. Yep. And, and one of the players said, Coach, man, got us here. And, and you know, I listened to the players and, and I said, you know, screw it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to go man to man. And, and, and you know what, the rest is history. I mean, Jamal almost got the lob. But then I asked Tom, you know, if we had zoned you, what would you have done? He goes, we would have run the same play because Tom's about as simple as me. And they wouldn't have gotten it because we would have had backed up zone. And that turned the game. And I mean, that's where Auburn Hills comes into play. But that's, it was, uh, I mean, I remember Kevin Sampson calling me. And it, I mean, we all thought we were going to Final Four. I didn't during the game, but we all thought we were going. And so did most people watching it. And it just kind of fell apart and give Michigan State credit. I mean, uh, great coach, great players. So you say you, you've you never watched it before. That's that's wild to me. So do you, do you think about it at all, of like what, what could have been, or is it just, you know, things happen and you move on? You know, I'm in such a different place in my life. I'm, I'm really – walking with the Lord and, and understand just what really is important. And, you know, I, I, I get, I, I get the impact of a national championship, but I don't think I'm put here to be remembered. I, I think I'm here to prepare for eternity. So it was a game. Yeah. It didn't work out. And, but, you know, as we talk about it, it would have been nice to have a national. So, coach, so let's you, go to the next game, next year, which you guys, which was a, uh, which, what, you know, when you look at that roster, I was, I, cause I don't think about it a lot. I, I was looking at the roster last night and losing Pfizer. Yeah. Uh, and I, I get the Hampton game. I really do. And, and, and here's my, I understand Paul Shirley. You know, I, I, I don't, I, I don't have Twitter, uh, Facebook. I, it took me an hour to find you guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not great at this stuff, but I pray for Paul because uh, it's gotten back to me that there's a few things that were said and even about some of the players and, and, you know, I, I, I really do because what's interesting is y'all remember Katrina. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Guess who was after Iowa State, staying in my house, working my camp during Katrina at, at Southern Miss, Jackson Roman and mm. Paul Schiff and Katrina. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. And like I say, I pray for him. But the one thing I would say is there was a time that year, the Hampton year, the famous Hampton year, that we were played as good as anybody. I remember seeing bench in the middle of the season going this team's as good as last year mm-hmm. and when you think about it you know losing Pfizer etc and, uh, and nurse n- that's why I go back yeah. to my nurse yeah. I, I think my nurse might be the most underrated Iowa State player ever I mean I, he in today's world he'd be in the NBA yep. along with several others mm. with roster expansion and etc so uh you know, I, I, I made a decision. And, you know, at the time, championships were huge. Championships oh. now. 
championships mean absolutely nothing. I mean, I couldn't tell you, or you got, okay, who won the ACC? Who won the Big Ten? I, you might, because in that you're in that area. But I couldn't tell you who won the league. I can tell you who advanced in the tournament last year. But I just made a decision that to hang two banners up there, back to back. So I burned that team out. I mean, I really did. I, I, I burned them out. Uh, funny story, I'll tell you. But uh, um and we lost to Baylor and we lost to Hampton. I think if we'd gotten past Hampton, we would have caught our steam again because I really tried to rest them. But this is the extent we went to. So Jamal, we had beaten somebody on Saturday, and we didn't play Kansas until the next Saturday at home. And I knew if we beat Kansas, we'd crawl home for the championship the following year. Jamal was I mean, his mother was everything in his world, which it should be. And she, you know, she was very ill, very ill. So Jamal asked if he can go back to New York after, again, we have a week in between games. And knowing Jamal, when he said he'd be back Tuesday, it meant at the best Thursday. <laughs> so so I was thinking about this this morning, I got to kick out. So Jamal's not back. Jamal goes back to New York. We're preparing for Kansas. And and he Tuesday shows up, no Jamal. Wednesday shows up, no Jamal. Thursday shows up, no Jamal. And if Jamal's not there on Friday, I mean, how are you gonna play him? So and I and he says he's gonna be in the morning. Well, I know better. So I told the team, uh you know, it's going to be very rare, but I, I, there's this huge booster, and I've got to speak at his little social. So we're going to practice at 9 o'clock at night on Friday, the night before the game. <laughs> Knowing that Jamal, it, he'd show, but you never know when. So I'm sitting at home all day, you know, it's Jamal here, it's Jamal here. He landed, coach. He landed. Okay. Uh, how far are you from the gym? And this is the funny part. So he gets there a little early. So I said, okay, move practice day. And, you know, I'm not a coat and tie guy. And I put on a coat and tie in my house in Ames and ran in the gym like I had spoke at this very <laughs> prestigious thing. Awesome. <laughs> I started, started taking my tie off. And I, I put my suit on in, at my house and took my tie off and, and acted like you know but it, it was just funny and t what does jamal do comes out and just tears it up so we were going to any extent to win that you know i stood that nebraska game that <clears throat> clinched it on a saturday night at hilton coliseum i mean jamal was brilliant that game and really that whole conference year he was he was awesome yeah, I mean, we were sluggish in that Nebraska game, if you remember. Yes, yep. And we started slow, but again, Hilton Magic pulled us through. And, and yeah, it was a great win. And, you know, back to back. And, uh, uh, but the Magic is something. It's always been something. It always was. When you think about Jamal Tinsley, he never lost at home. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, he, he mid, Second year, I think the stat was they'd only lost four times in league and all were in overtime. Yep. Yep. So that's the thing with that year. You guys, I mean, you it was what the Missouri game down there in Columbia went like four overtimes, and you were down to like walk ons at one point because everybody else had fouled out. And that was, I think, what Kareem Rush and Clarence Gilbert on the other end were just making everything. Uh, man, that was. I mean, those two years were so fun just because it was new for Iowa State fans because, I mean, you had – you were playing for everything. And coach to this day, uh, since 1945, 2000 and 2001 are Iowa State's only Big 12 or any conference regular season titles. So, um, it's just – I mean, it was a great era. It really was. And, you know, you've got to give the players all the credit because, you know – I was a fit for some guys and not a fit for all guys. And uh, I asked a lot out of Jake Sullivan. I mean, I asked, you know, he get, Jake Sullivan's one of my all-time 
friends, you know, uh, but I pushed him so hard and I pushed those guys so hard and they bought into we were going to be stronger, more physical and keep the offense simple. And, and they really did. They worked, we worked them really hard and, and the reward was on the court. The game was easy for those guys. Hmm. Practices were harder. Coach, do you, my so all time guy, don't feel, ask me anything. And my all time favorite duos, Roman yeah. Homan. I love those guys. You got any good stories on those guys for us? Well, they stole the, remember that couch in, the, uh, in Hilton? Yeah. You remember where the students were allowed to sit on the couch? Yeah, I do. I do. Bring it back. Yes. That ended up in their apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Somehow I found that year about years later. Jackson was tra just tragic. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just, just tragic. Uh, Jared would come out and see me every now and then. Uh, I was very close to Jackson throughout his uh, NBA career and then overseas. Uh, that's 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 the kicker right there. That you know, I messed it up. I did what I did. I've always said, you know, you're where you're at because what you did. So I messed up a beautiful thing. But Bill Self told me that he thought that team was a not an NIT Final Four, but an NC2A Final Four. And when you think about it, you know, I was think I, you know, I have all the respect in the world for Adam Velasquez. He always wanted to be a Hawkeye, but you know, I, I he was stayed. I believe you'd have to ask Adam, but he's yeah. a fine guy. And we brought Stinson, you know, I mean. We had Marcus a, Jefferson was really good. Yeah, Marcus Jefferson was really good. And those two, Holman and Holman and uh, Roman were studs. I mean, studs. And they went out and at it every day. I mean, it was a fight a day between those two. They were tough. I, I'm with you. I mean, I think that team, that 2003-2004 team, which had been Coach Morgan's first year, I think that team had as much talent as about any Iowa State team had. Um, finally put it together. So let me, let's me let back up a little bit. J just looking big picture, you said we can ask you anything. Do you, do you think a lot about how things ended with Iowa State? And Because I, I do occasionally, and I think if that's today, it doesn't go down the same way it does, um, for good or bad. And just trying to think what, what your what your takeaways are now, twenty years later. You know, uh, I think it's all God's plan. I really do, because the way it went down, I think I helped a lot of people who struggle mm -hmm. with with addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a problem with what happened. Uh, now, Colorado State is different. I mean, they cut me at the core, uh, uh, but. I was state is, you know, I was representing, I let down a great university. I let down a huge university. And that's what I told the Boise State team. You know, I, it's easy to handle adversity, but when you have success, I didn't handle it. I was all over the place. You know, I was insecure deep down. Uh, uh, you know, I don't really question it. You know, Bruce did what he had to do. Uh, it, it, it was a perfect storm for everything. Uh, but for me, it, it might have been the best thing in the round. It was the best thing in the round in my life. Coach, I dressed drinking. Go ahead. Yeah, well, you said earlier that you, you're a cyclone and it kind of bothered people at Colorado State or whatever. When did that happen? Because I, I guess I would just assume the human side of you, everything goes down at the end of Iowa State. You, you couldn't have been like a Cyclone fan a year after that, right? When did when did you come to terms with what you're talking about now, being a changed man? You seem like you're in an amazing spot, which you look great. When, how long did it take for you to reconcile those thoughts about Iowa State like you have now? Well, you know, about right away I went into rehab. And I, I – found the Lord. Now, if anybody says they're a perfect Christian, I, I, I would doubt that. But I, I've tried to and continue to try to walk with the Lord. And when I came out, I was content. I really was. Now, 
when you're in Southern Miss and you've got 12 people at the first game and your office is a trailer with a hitch on it, uh, which is not comfortable for a head coach, you know, with a hitch on it where they just drive you off and say, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I, I really wanted to coach that team. So to say I was, you know, wasn't jealous isn't the word, just disappointed that I didn't get that opportunity. But I, I mean, it wasn't, I, I defamed the university. I really did. I, I own it. I mean, uh, again, I repeat myself, but it's, it's as fine as university. And I didn't really get that when I was there. You know, I was very immature because I was drinking and never drank on the job, never did any of that. But, you know, I was very immature and didn't really understand what an institution that was. So it was over, you know, quickly, you know, Mm -hmm. that first year was kind of hard because I knew the guys that they had and they weren't kind kind of achieving what they should have. But again, I've, I've, I mean, I've been in Ames several times uh, since, since I left there. Did you watch that team, that first Wayne Morgan team? I was curious how much you kept in touch with it. That, that, that was hard. I, I, I never did. I, I, I never did. Uh, you know, Curtis Stinson would have been I, I, you know, a strong personality. He had, we, had been, we would have been perfect for each other. We would have not liked each other, <laughs> but, but he would have been he, – he was my kind of guy. He, he was special, as we all know. And uh, I just think it really would have helped to have a strong, strong personality coaching him. And uh, but I didn't watch him. But, I mean, they, they Jake Solomon uh, admittedly said they underachieved. And, and that's not anything on Wayne. That's not anything yeah. on anybody. It's just it's what it was, you know. Coach, would you would you be open to coming back to Ames? And in my opinion, this is me talking, not you, of uh, getting a what I would think is a proper recognition for those teams. Hard to believe, but next year's the 25th anniversary of that 99 2000 team. And man, I just feel in my end, I feel like there's an opportunity to to give that team and you specifically um, kudos that you haven't received in the reception that I think is deserved for you. I'd be there in a heartbeat. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you watched the Yogi, the Yogi. On Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he held that thing against the Yankees for 13 years. I know coaches that Bob Knight held Indiana until rest is solely passed away. Yeah. I, I would in a heartbeat. The one thing I wouldn't do, and, and I, I've, because I've had people say, well, do you think they'll ever ask you to be in the Hall of Fame? I wouldn't go into it because I, I don't think I did the right thing for that university. I would respectfully say no. I mean, I mean that I love that university so much, and I know the state as well as anybody, and I know, you know, just what that university stands for. And I went along with it and the rivalry, and there's no pro team and et cetera. I, I just, you know, I let them down. Uh, I let them down for God's reasons, in my opinion. I let them down, and, and but many of many have learned from my situation. It's it's powerful to hear you say that, Coach. And I just I I I would like to echo what Brent said. It man, back in those days, we didn't we didn't think about mental health and you know alcoholism and addiction the way that we do now and it seems like you've really embraced it and trying to help people along the way it's it's really it's really powerful did did it was it just simply going to rehab or was it a person in your life that took took you under your wing how how did you get to where you are right now well i've always had a magnified mind i mean you know this is really interesting so I just read the other day, and only because our head coach, who's so brilliant here, put it up on board. But the human mind has forty thousand to sixty thousand thoughts a day. 
and 85% of them are negative or repetitive, negative. Well, I, I was diagnosed with OCD uh, and not, not the kind where you clean and my wife has that, um, but just this mind just keeps going and going and going. And that's one of the major reasons why I drank is to turn my mind off. Mm. So I get it. Uh, as well as anybody. Um, you know, I look back and I think about, you know, some of my ex-players, you know, they, they had issues. Uh, but I also think today, to be brutally honest, I think it's kind of used as a cop-out. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not doing good, so I, I, gotta rest, I, I got mental health, I got to rest myself. Well, I didn't guarantee you I had some guys with some severe problems, and they just fought through it. I think it's different today. But back then, you're right. Great point. They 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 did not understand. We had you heard of OCD when I was at no. You, the first time I did coach, interesting was when Jake Sullivan said he had OCD and it became kind of a story. Yeah, because he would shoot all the time. Yeah, forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, I I ever since I can remember, my mind would, I, I, and and it's a blessing and a curse. You know, it's why I was so driven. It's why I was so, it's why Jake was so driven. You know, the old story about he'd be shooting in Minnesota and, and, and with gloves on, and then he'd put another pair of gloves in the oven after those froze, and, and that's part of it. So, you know, he's done in his life. I mean, his children, you know, I mean, but it's, 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 it's glad to know that I wasn't the only guy crazy in the world because growing up, I thought I was nuts. And then I met Larry Brown <laughs> and I met guy that were totally like me. And, you know, cause when you don't know you're on an Island, you think you're the only guy in the world that thinks this crazy way. And, uh, it's tough to shut your mind off. Coach, when you were in the, in the twilight or in the prime of all this, did you realize what you were doing with the turtleneck fashion statement? Well, I know Adidas was paying me a hundred thousand to wear. So that was <laughs> pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think my good friend Tom Stark over there in Ames, he'd get his Catholic priest to wear that for a hundred thousand a year. So, uh, but yeah, I was always, you know, I, I, I didn't. I wore a tie the first year. Uh, I just never. You know, I tried to play the role at Iowa State. That and 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 that's you know you represent. Bill Self represents Kansas like a CEO, and and I was the opposite. You know, I I never. You know, I wore the turtleneck. I was the first guy to wear tennis shoes at Colorado <laughs> State. My ID. I think that's why we got sideways. I was the first guy to bring the chairs out. Um, when you think about it, yeah, uh, you know, but I got that from Hubie Brown, um, because of his language <laughs> when he was with the Knicks. But so I, you know, this coat and tie thing always wore me out, and, I, uh, and even the shoes. Uh, you like my hair? It's awesome, yeah, look, looking good. This is my Don Nelson, he's my idol. Oh, oh my gosh. I love I love Don Nelson, even even though he's a hawk. So, co what what one just big picture? Quick, what was <laughs> only what, you would do that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I love it. He's, he's I love a hawk. It. He's a hawk. Uh, <laughs> when you look back at you know your time at, at Iowa State, what stuck out the most? Was it the players? Obviously, the winning was great. A lot of highs, um, probably some lows too. But what what sticks out most here, 25 years later, 20 years later? Not to make you feel too old. You know. I think I really changed a lot of guys' lives, you know, and, and it's not only there, but as I move on, I get so many calls from ex-players, and it wasn't for everybody. I mean, our warm-up was 30 minutes of, I mean, you throw up, and then we practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's kind of like the junction. I don't know if you watched the Bear Bryant. Yeah. It, it was not for everybody. But I'd say the proudest thing is is that you take Jamal Tinsley, uh, you know, from a guy that did not go very far in school, 
and he's become a, a great entrepreneur right now. You know, uh, a lot of cool stories. Uh, the fans were, I mean, there's a lot of things I could touch on. The fans were, I mean, just face it. In the Big 12, when you talk about Kansas, Iowa State, uh, they, they're knowledgeable. They, they, they get hard play. They get blue collar uh, basketball. And unlike Floyd, so I'm getting off the subject here, but unlike Floyd, who walked it down the court, uh, <laughs> we, 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 Floyd always gives me crap. You guys play with some pace. We played with real pace. And with Jamal Kinsley, we were really good with that pace. And Pfizer finally started running when he figured Tinsley would throw it to him. So, <laughs> You know, we, uh, I, you know, the players, the impact I hope I made on them. And, and you know, I, I, I don't talk, I talk to some of them, but not a lot. And I want to start doing that. Uh, just the atmosphere, the basketball, the league, you know, the, the pride of Iowa State to try to come in there and beat you. And then take Iowa State on the road. That's when it's really fun. Yeah. In Kansas. Twice. Five Twice. times in a row. Five times in a row, coach. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 pretty special. Just another and, gym. Yeah. It, it, I mean it, but but again, I I mean, we had great players. And we were on the first teams to play three guards and, and play small. I mean, look at that lineup. Pfizer yeah. was Six six. Yep. Stevie was probably six three. The rest were six foot, six one. So, uh, so then, we, how did you how did you get those guys to play so hard? Was it them? Was it just the way? I mean, it's unbelievable that that team was as tough and physical and rebounded as well as it did. With what you said, you had a six three to six six front court player. You know, I I, I it, to self analyze is really hard. It's really hard. So I've had people tell me what they think of me as a coach. And I remember I brought Jamal Tinsley in in uh, our first practice. He he fell against the wall and said, I didn't sign a freaking track scholarship. I, you know, so you got to know when to rub behind the ears. You got to know when to get on them. I mean, it wasn't just never touched a player. I, I said some vulgar words that I wouldn't do, but, but we were just, we, we just got after it. And, and, and there was some, you know, I always thought we were, you're vulnerable after a loss and, and you can really pound them when you win. And we won a lot, so I can really pound them. If that makes sense. Yep. Yep. That's Coach great. Jamal came back. It was probably five or six years ago. And I figured you'd think this is cool. I had never interviewed him before. And there were a bunch of media that showed up to, you know, do pieces on him. And I'll, I'll never forget it. I had never really been around him at all. And he was just kind of looking around. And he got really choked up. And from, from what I had heard, I had heard stories like you told, like, man, we don't even know if Jamal will show up to this thing. And he was there and... He had to physically, you know, wait and gather his emotions before he could even talk to the media. What does that mean to you? Because he hadn't been back, right? Yeah, Since he, he hadn't been back. This was his first time back, like five years ago. Well, you got to understand Jamal and his background, and and anybody that wants to, any ex player that wants to, you, you know, say something negative about Jamal Tinsley, that's completely not right. He was always on time. He always went to class. He stayed out of trouble. Did you ever hear Jamal Tinsley in trouble? I mean, anybody that could have been in trouble, you know, he he was, you know, basically raised, I don't know if the sensor or not, basically raised his trip bar since he yeah. was 12 years old. And uh, I just, not to go back a little farther, I remember he had to pass this one class at San Jacinto Junior College, and he was eligible at Iowa State, and he didn't want to take it. I, I, I mean, he had, coming from where he came from, 
he had such a fear of failure. He had, he had all these, I mean, he had issues that nobody can even imagine if you've been where he grew up. And for him to make that progress and adjust to a major college and, and become a leader, uh, yeah, I, I get Jamal as well as anybody. And, and I was told everybody, I, 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 I take a team. Who would I go to Hawaii with? Who would I go to Hawaii with for a week? Jamal. <laughs> Who would I go to Hawaii with? Jackson Brown. Not even an issue. You know, I, Jamal was funny. He was brilliant. In spite of not a great education, he was brilliant. I mean, he, he was funny. He was, he's, he is smart. Uh, yeah, he, he I, I can see that with Jamal. You know, Jamal is. It was it, neat. It was really had, neat to see how overcome he was just being back in Hilton Coliseum. There was no crowds. Nobody was there. It was a total empty gym, and he couldn't even get words out of his mouth. It was so touching for him to be in that moment. Yeah, that's really cool. I, 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 you know, he's he's a human being. I mean, he he has emotions. He's brilliant, like I say, and that would be emotional for him because those were probably the best times of his life from a basketball standpoint. That's cool. It's cool to hear. I'd love to come back and see everybody. That'd be awesome. Well, we're going to make that happen. We're going to figure this out one way or another. And, and Coach, just, I mean, again, the not that it matters a whole lot to you, but the impact you had on the Cyclone fan base with those teams, I mean, just quite candidly, those teams in a way changed my whole trajectory because I wanted to go to Iowa State because of those teams. And in which, so, I mean, I just hope that you understand that Cyclone Nation, like you're you're an icon, you're a legend, and we're trying to to let everybody know, especially the younger generation, what you guys accomplished is second to none. So I just want to say thank you for for what you did for Iowa State. Well, I I appreciate I appreciate what you guys do for Iowa State, my team. Once again, uh, you know it's it's I've been so I've been treated so well when I go back to Ames. I I, I know you know when when you're liked and not liked and you're I'm, loved and, and, and people are just so respectful and, 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 you know, there it, it's, it's really cool to go back there. And I'm yesterday's news everywhere, but in Iowa, and I don't need the attention. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but people are, the guy spotted me on the beach in Florida the other day. I mean, that's Ames, Iowa. That's Iowa state. I don't need that. I don't want it, but that's the following they you're, have. You know you're going to get it in Florida this week too, right, Coach? You're a rock star up here. There's going to be fans yeah. that are going to see you there with Boise, and they're going to want – Yeah, I promise you, you, you're you one of the most beloved figures in the history of this university. Well, that's so cool to hear, but I don't, you know, I don't need that, but that's so kind to say I really don't. I used to, but I don't now. And they're not going to recognize me because I'm going to have my main. <laughs> there you I, go. I put it on a bun during our game. So, well, uh, well, Coach, one thing I wanted to ask, and again, not to rewind too much, but the one thing that strikes me about the year 2003 was when Pete Taylor unexpectedly passed yeah. away. Um, you know, been March of 2003. And I've always wondered if Pete's still around, does anything happen differently with? Because I know you and Pete, from what I've and I've become friends with Eric Heff now and John Walters, that you and Pete were particularly close. And man, it was a huge loss for the entire Iowa State fan, Iowa State fan base, and left a huge void for all of us. Well, if Gene Smith hadn't left, it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, if Pete was around, no question, he would have strong armed. He would have, he would have quit. But with that said, and, and Pete was the I think about them all the time. Uh, it, it's not our plan; it's God's plan. That's yeah. the way it's supposed to happen. And and I think so many people benefit from it. And I'm repeating myself, but it's just the way it was supposed to happen. And and uh, it it wasn't a great ending, but it was a great ending for a lot of people at outside of the Iowa State circle. But I told I get what you're saying. I get where you're going with that. And it wouldn't have happened if Pete was there. 
Absolutely not. And I think Eric would agree. Yeah, I Coach, really you, yep. you got this position with, with Boise State. Did, would you ever be a head coach again if the opportunity presented itself? Or are you done? No, I, 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 I like being liked when these players like me, <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm a good guy now. I like yeah. that. I like that. Uh, it's, it's, I don't think kids have changed. I think parents have changed. I think victims are raising victims. I think our country has gotten so soft and, and so it's soft. And so, I tried to adjust to Colorado State, and you, and it and it just you know it, it it's just what it is. I mean, you can't really to get somebody to grow as a person and a player. You've got to put them in uncomfortable situations. You have to, yep. and it's really hard to do it these days without being tape recorded. And and you know. And I agree with players getting paid, but there's got to be some end to how they're paying them. And, and, and I mean, it's, a, it's just so different. It's different. I could do it, but I don't want to. Do you, do you find yourself, okay, if it's a random Tuesday night, does Coach Stacey want to watch whatever college basketball, the, you know, the Kentucky-Kansas game, or would you rather just watch Netflix now? Well, I'm watching the center right now on Netflix. But I, I'm a huge TV guy. But you know what's weird? That's a great question. Since I've been at Boise State, I never watched college basketball when I was a coach. Hmm. I never watched it. Floyd look, can't catch enough games. I never watched it. I didn't watch it much after Colorado State. But since I've been back in it here, I'm I'm starting to watch it again. It, mm, it's good. it that's it's interesting. I don't know why I'm doing it, but yeah, I like to watch college basketball. Do you do the analytics and stuff? Yeah, you know, back to that they just played Larry's teams in the third person. We didn't just play. We had a board of thirty five things after the game that you were mm. held accountable for. I stole that from Don Nelson. So this analytic crap has been <laughs> going on since Don Nelson was with the Milwaukee Bucks. And all I did was steal that from him. And we are very analytic. Nowadays, I think it's it's good. But the, the bottom line is you still have to, you know, get strong, play through fatigue, the things that really do win. So, uh it's just different right now. Yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time with Quinn Snyder with the Jazz, and uh, guys, he become a great coach. I yeah. mean, he's a great coach, and uh, I, I mean, I couldn't pick up plays as a player. It was hard for me. I, I, I George was there, Nang, who was awesome. Yep. yep. Awesome. I mean, as good as guy. Have you ever seen him do uh, TV? He's phenomenal. He's giving me great. Whenever he retires, yeah. Unbelievable. And we had a lot of fun. But there's, I mean, it's very detailed. It's, I just think sometimes it's over. You know, it's, the game is not that hard. It's, it's pretty simple. But, uh, you know, it, you can get too analytical. Do you, Coach, do you think those two Big 12 champions you had, could they compete in today's college basketball with anybody? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, because, you know, I, I look at the roster and I go, you know, Paul Shirley would be in the NBA today. Yep. Like we talked about, you know, Jared Holman would be. Um, and these teams, they, they, they aren't as tough as we were or as strong. I mean, we were the strongest team in the country. I mean, we, we really emphasize that. Again, I stole from Don Nelson. But we were physical, and we prided ourselves on being tough. It's hard to find a really hard-playing team these days. Uh, so I would I would take that team. I'm not sure I'd try to guard that big guy from Kansas. <laughs> Monster. Yesterday. 
I mean, but yeah, I, I do. And that's saying something. That really is saying Because if Jamal Tinsley was in shape, he'd still play in the NBA. Yep. If Pfizer didn't get hurt, Pfizer could still yep. play. So we had, it, it, coaching's overrated. You know, I, I, I mean, it, it really is. It's all about the players. Well, Coach, this has been a great honor. Before we let you go, um, I did – I was supposed to tell you that McCarney says hi. Uh, I, I had done one of these with him a couple weeks ago, and I can only imagine what it was like being Pete Taylor getting to work with both of you guys. on a And Coach Fennelly and, and Gene Smith. And Fennelly, oh, my gosh. I blame Dan and Fennelly for my drinking. <laughs> <laughs> because those those – summer tours yeah yeah tell dan i said hi and and thanks because they were my role models in a i just yeah. happened to be the one that 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 took the hit no <laughs> that's awesome but we had a great time with pete and those guys we bill was awesome it was so much fun time of our lives coach really been an honor uh, we, I look forward to shaking your hand in Florida. And anything else you'd like to say to all the Iowa State fans listening to this? No, I just I, I think I've said it. I just I, I love them. I I it's 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 my team. It'll always be my team. I could cry right now. It'll always be my team. And and I just do have the regret of disappointing them. I really do, and I own it. Uh, well, they've moved on and they're TJ. Uh, I'm a huge fan of, uh, huge fan of. Um, Iowa State is really, you know, Iowa State, when I first got there, you start thinking about jobs. It was not, mm. you know, it was a great atmosphere and a great place, but I've seen what Ames has turned into. I've seen what they're, what they built. I mean, Iowa State has become a monster and they've certainly got the right guy for it. Well, Coach, well, I we would say you're you – yeah, we got to get you back, but you're a big part of what Iowa State has become today. So just – Anytime, you're back with that. Love anytime, it. You, okay. anytime you're bored and just want to hang out with us, just shoot me a text and we'll we'll, we'll have you on anytime you want. I, I love it. I know it's a little rusty today. I haven't done many of these, but uh, – <laughs> We're honored. We really are that you that you allowed us to pick your brain like this. So thank you, Coach. And thanks, Coach. To everybody right. listening, have a very happy Thanksgiving.